Hi, everybody. Uh, we're going to be looking at U, which is the uh, systems section of Algebra 1 IXL. And I'm only on the second section. It's solve a system of equations by graphing. And I'm really looking forward to this one. Uh, I have not previewed it, so it's going to be a total surprise. It should be fun. Always enjoy doing these. And I don't see them ahead of time. So what do we get? Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we have two equations in slope-intercept form. Um, I would really like to use uh, color coding on this, but I don't think it allows it. So I'm going to graph these two equations. Now, there's a number of different uh, ways to solve this. You can substitute. You can uh, uh, you can solve it by add addition. There's a whole bunch of different methods. Uh, solving by uh, um, graphing, we are going to graph this first equation. And I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of explanation as I go along. So my first equation is y equals negative 2x plus 1. If you haven't done the whole s section, it's probably a good idea. Notice that this number in front of the x is a slope. This is in, this, this is in the uh, form uh, slope intercept form where m is the slope, that's the coefficient of x, and b is the y-intercept. Now the reason that we love the y-intercept and we love to graph it is because it's the easiest point in the world to find. Now you don't have to use zero for x, you can use any number you want for x, and that's it's an independent variable. You can choose whatever number you want. It just so happens that if I put a zero for x, look what happens. You see, the negative 2 over 1 is totally doesn't matter. Uh, when you multiply by the 0, this is just 0 plus 1. So y equals 1. This number right here is called the y-intercept because it's going to be on the y-axis when x is 0. So this point is going to be my first point. Now, my other point I can find in a number of different ways. I could just put a different number in for x, like 2, and then I would get negative 3. Um, which would be negative 2 times 2 plus 1, which is negative 3. Um, if x is 2, then y is negative 3, and I would get another point uh, to negative 3. But you don't have to do that. You can count the slope, which is a beautiful method. I'm going to, from here, I'm going to go down 2 and over 1. That is down 2 units and over 1 unit. And that's going to give me my equation. I know I really over explained it, but there it is because the whole thing is com comes down to can you uh, graph these lines more or less. So the second one notice says this is my second equation y equals negative x. It's not a negative y, by the way, it's just y. It's the second one right here negative x uh, minus 2. Now, in this particular case, if x is 0, then y is negative 2. Of course, there it is, right there. A lot of people say, but wait a minute, it's supposed to be plus b. Well, remember, subtraction is the same as plus a negative 2. So 0, negative 2 is my y-intercept. There it is. Now, oh, I was supposed to finish graphing that one. Let me see. Hmm. It was supposed to graph it there. It graphed it. I wonder. Maybe I'm missing something here. Oh, there it is. And now I'm going to go to the next one. OK, I didn't see that down below. All right, so our second equation is y equals, and they did color code it, negative x minus 2. And our first point is 0, negative 2. It's, let me get rid of this for a second here. Oh. Sorry, guys. I, I, I should have, I should have, uh, scrolled it up. I didn't, didn't know this was down here. Like I said, I didn't preview it. All right, so we're going to go to 0, negative 2. There it is. And we're going to go, uh, we're going to count our slope. Now, again, I could choose whatever number I want, change its sign and subtract 2, and I'll get another point on my uh, orange graph in this case. But a, a really nice method is to look at the number in front of x. This is called a coefficient. And this number is 1, even though you don't see it, 
And if I write it as a fraction, it's negative one over one. Well, a slope of negative one over one literally tells me from any point, I can go down one and over to the right one. And I'll go through more detail here. And then that's another point. And that's another point right there. See that intersection point right there? That's where both equations are true. And we could prove it and we could go through all the steps, but here's the point. It's at three, negative five, hopefully you can read it. Um, where I get the three from is right here. This is the three, it's my X value. Oh man, come on. I gotta, maybe I'll click off of it there. And there's the negative five over here. So anyway, it's three, negative five which will make both equations true. Probably went into way too much detail for you, but uh, I, I promise I'll speed it up a little bit from now on. All right, so we're gonna go down here. We're gonna take a look at these guys and I'm gonna get rid of my, uh, I'm gonna get rid of my points here. All right, we're gonna start with the blue equation. My y-intercept is zero, and when x is zero, y is negative two. So zero, negative two, that's for my blue. Now I'm gonna count the slope. Notice there's a one in front of the x, even though you don't see it. And up one over one is a slope of one. And I want you to notice that these points are going up one and over one every time. But I'm not starting at zero, zero. That's a very common mistake. All right, in this other one, I'm gonna to go to four, and then I'm gonna go down one and over one and these are gonna give me points. And that point at three, one makes both equations true. And I could go through that. Uh, I could show you that it's the true, that if I put a three in for X, we get a one out. And if I put a three in here for X, I get a one. So it makes both equations true. Three, one. Okay, I'm gonna go a little faster now. This time we're gonna to go to me move it up. Okay, we've got a blue equation. And notice that my y intercept is at zero negative one. Um, there it is. And I have to count down one and over one. That's a negative one slope. Notice it's going downhill. The other one is a positive one slope, but its y intercept is at zero. If x is zero, y is negative five. So I go to zero negative five. Oh, Dang it, what happened? I thought I, I thought I had it. Oh, well, I'll do it again. I get to start all over again. Okay, let me get rid of that. Okay, I'm gonna go to negative one. I'm gonna have a negative one slope, there we go. And then I'm gonna go to the, the orange equation, I see. It was yellow because it wasn't highlighted yet. Now I'm gonna go to zero, negative five, and I'm gonna count up one and over one, up one and over one. And my intersection, of course, is at two, negative four. What? What? Oh God, I can't read today. Sorry guys, it's a two negative three. How in the hell did I miss that? I don't know. All right, I'm doing it on. <laughs> Damn, talking too much and get, get confused because of the, uh, the mess here. All right, so I'm gonna go through zero negative six and I have slope one. There's my green line. Now I have to highlight my blue line so I'm in the right one. I go to zero two, which is right there, and I count down seven over one. Down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, over one, which is gonna put me at that nice intersection point. Um, from two, I'm going down seven and over one because negative seven is negative seven over one. Um, my intersection point is right there, which is at one negative five. So I'm gonna put it in. Crazy, I don't know how I could have missed that. All right, now we have a, a, a strange situation here. Uh, first of all, X equals one, is, notice is the only kind of line that is not a function. It's because if I put one into the equation, I don't know what Y value I'm gonna get. In fact, I'm gonna get a whole bunch of different Y values. A lot of people think X equals one 
looks like this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and show you what a lot of people may make this mistake. This is wrong. Uh, this is y equals one. And a lot of people say, well, wait a minute. Uh, that looks right. Well, this is y equals one, x equals one. It's not there, it's right here and right here. Oops. Oh, I gotta get rid of the other one first. There we go. Um, all these points are where x is one. And a good way to think of it is you can say, if x is one, it doesn't matter what y value I choose. And notice this is not a function. Now, to get the solution, notice that if x is one, y, of course, is gonna be three, isn't it? Because this says y equals three x. So clearly, uh, if x is one, y is equal to three, but I'm gonna go ahead and write the equation in slope intercept form. I'm gonna to try to be consistent. y equals three x plus zero, of course, which means it's going through zero, zero, and it has a slope of three. That's up three and over one. And of course we knew one three was our solution. One, three. All right, we're gonna get, uh, gonna get moving here. See if we get a little more interesting. Okay, so y equals 2x. Realize that there's a plus zero with this guy um, as its intercept. It goes through zero, zero. It's sometimes called a direct variation, or sometimes they say that x is proportional to y. Lots of ways of saying the same thing. So y equals 2x, and uh, I'm going to, of course, zero doubled is still zero. Uh, let me make sure I have the right equation, there it is, y equals 2x. So 0, 0, and we have a slope of 2, and there's our equation. Now we're going to go to the blue equation. We are going to go through 0, 6, and we have a slope of negative 1, and we can see that our solution is at 2, 4. I don't want to make this one too long, so especially since I made an error somewhere. I don't know how I did that. All right, y equals negative 6 is a horizontal line and it is, uh, it is a function. Um, basically anything I put in for X, I get negative six out. It's not very interesting, but if you were to look at a mapping of this thing, you have a whole bunch of X's, zero, and one, and two, and so on. And they're all going to one simple range. This one goes to negative six, this one goes to negative six. And a lot of people say, well, wait a minute. I, I, Aren't you supposed it to look at, watch out for things where there's repeats, right? It's when you get the same X's going to different Y's, that's the problem. This one is okay, this is a function. Anyway, uh, more information than you wanted, so let's go to this one. Let's graph our, uh, let me get rid of this too. I'm gonna graph my green line at zero, negative one, and I'm gonna count my slope. I go up five and over one, and I graph my green line. Then I'm going to graph my uh, purple line, or I guess it's purple, and y is negative 6. And y is negative 6 all along this line. Uh, and of course, especially at that point right there, which is at the point negative 1, negative 6. Probably went into way too much detail earlier. Sorry, guys, I'll go a little quicker this time. Oh, this one is sort of the gimme, and, and I don't want you to ever miss one of these. Notice that the solution is going to be, duh, x is two and y is six. Uh, if you don't get that answer, you made a mistake, okay? So x is two, and I'm gonna go ahead, uh, I'm gonna graph my y equals six first. So y equals six, this is a function, there's where y is always six. And x equals two is my blue equation. And this is where x is equal to two. And of course the intersection is at two, six. So there you go. Okay, what do we got here? We've got negative one, one. So y equals one is right there. And x equals negative one is right here. And of course our intersection here is at negative one, one. Make sure I put the answer in. 
Okay, we've got two different types of equations here. You need to be able to graph both. Don't let this freak you out. Now this one should look familiar. This is the slope intercept form. So we'll do that one first. Let me get it up here so we can look at them. All right, so we'll start with this one. Now, most of you know, we're gonna go through zero two. That's our Y intercept. And we have slope of negative one half. That's down one and over two. Notice that it's down one and over two and down one and over two and so on. Now there's a bunch of ways of graphing this green equation. Now I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it two different ways for you. X plus three Y equals nine. A lot of people insist on always graphing by using the slope and intercept. There are some drawbacks to that. For, for one thing, it's a lot slower than graphing by intercept. But the nice thing is that you always do the same steps. We're gonna solve for Y. We wanna get the Y by itself. And in order for that to happen, I'm going to subtract x. Now I'm gonna tell you something. Don't use subtraction in algebra. And the reason is that subtraction is not commutative. This is what I mean. If I do this and I say x minus x is zero, and I say that it leaves me with three y, it's fine, everything's okay. The problem is that this is backwards, isn't it? Nine minus x. And of course, I really want my x to be listed first and my nine afterwards. Well, if you have nine minus x, that is not the same thing as x minus nine. We say that subtraction is not commutative. You can't change it around. But if I change, if I make this plus a negative x, I still get my zero and I can switch these terms. So now I have negative x plus nine probably more information than you wanted. Now I'm gonna show you a huge error. Um, half my students who first learn how to solve these get this wrong. And this is students who I get into pre-cal and calculus class and they make this error. They divide by three on both sides and they are tempted to cancel this nine and this three. And I'll bet you're tempted to as well. And there's a reason. Three divided by three is one, and three goes nice into nine, doesn't it? And a lot of people are gonna cancel this three with this nine. And the reason you can't is that this three is a common denominator. And the best way to avoid this from the very beginning is to always, when you do multiplication or division, you have to multiply both sides but a better statement is to say, I'm gonna multiply all the terms. Later in this section, you're gonna find that when we use Gaussian elimination or what we call elimination when we're doing addition method, you're going to want to multiply both sides of your equation by a term or by a number. And multiplying all the terms is gonna save you so much pain and heartache like this one. So what we're gonna do is instead of writing it like this, I write it like this. And I want you to notice that this still is negative X plus nine over the common denominator. Remember when we add fractions, they are over three. But now I can cancel this three with this nine and it's still true. That gives me Y equals, this is a negative one. There is a one in front of that X negative one third X plus three. Now I realize I probably gave you way too much information, but there it is. Now I can graph this guy, this green equation uh, is negative one third X plus three. It's the same thing. So I can go through zero three and I can go down one and over three. And notice that it did not get to the purple line. Over here, I have to go backwards and by the way, remember that negative one over three is the same as positive one over negative three. And that says that on the pink line, uh, sorry, on the green line, I can go from any point on the line and go up one and back three. One, two, three, which puts me right there. And I can go up one and back three. One, two, three, which puts me right there. And there's my point at negative six, five. Um, a lot of people, uh, I know I really went crazy with this, but I want to show you one more while I have e your attention here. 
you see this x plus 3y equals 9. You don't have to do all this. There is another way to go, and it's called the intercepts. And I'm going to find the intercepts, and I'm going to caution you and show you some stuff about this. So we've got x plus 3y equals 9. And I promise you're going to love the intercepts. It is extraordinarily fast, but it leads to a weird error. So I'm going to caution you to do the following. Remember how when we wanted to find an easy point, we would put x equal to 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let x equal 0. Don't, don't uh, do this without writing this down first. You will be so much happier if you write it like this. Now, if x is 0, then what I can do is cover up this x with my finger. I usually do it with my finger. I can't, can't show you on, the, on, on here. But then I divide by 3 on both sides to get the y by itself, and I get the 3. So let me put the x back. Remember, I was just covering it up with my finger. Now I'm going to do the other one. And this time I'm going to let y equal 0. And I'm going to cover up the other term because 3y, when y is 0, is just 0. Now look what you got, x equals 9. This process, it, when you're using your hand and you're not covering it up, you know, like this, and you're just using your finger, try it again. Do the 0, cover up the x, and you can see 3y equals 9. We solve for the y. Notice that 0, 3 makes this equation true, doesn't it? 0 plus 3 times 3 is 9. And 9 plus 3 times 0 is 9. So these two, equal, these two points make this equation true, which means I can graph those points. Now, a big error is to put this one on the x-axis and maybe this one on the y-axis. Here's how you can tell. You see that this, num this 3 is a y value? That's a y-intercept. This is a point on the y-axis, and it is at 0, 3. And there's my 0, 3 right there. Now, 9, 0 is on my, my x-axis. Notice that that is an x-value, and it's right there. And you can see it. Hopefully, you got all that. Of course, we're looking for the intersection point, which is at negative 6, 5. Probably way more information than you wanted, but there you have it. So now I'm going to speed it up just a little bit. Now, if x is equal to 6, we could substitute it in and find our solution. But of course, we're supposed to graph it. So I'm going to graph these guys. And I am going to use my... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this, this, oops. I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, intercepts to graph this one. I'm going to go a little faster, but I'm still going to explain it. I put in the zero for the x, I cover up the x with my hand, and I see 3y equals negative 3. Divide by 3 and you get negative 1. I'm going to let this y be zero, and this time I just get negative 3. So these two points make this blue equation true. 0, negative 1 is right there, and negative 3, 0 is right there. So there's my blue line. Now I want my uh, green one. Now x is equal to 6 right here, and right here, and right here, and of course right there where we want it. Notice that my solution will have a 6 for the x, of course, and then I'm going to get the negative 3. Hopefully my uh, Wolverine isn't too uh, distracting. He's my favorite Marvel character. All right, y equals x. Don't freak out about that one. That's, uh, that actually uh, is the, um, uh, the family of graphs. It's, it's also sometimes called the identity function because three, three, four, four, negative two, negative two. They, they're the same all the time and uh, this is y equals 1x plus 0, if you want to write it that way. I'll rewrite it for you. y equals 1x plus 0. So we're going through 0, 0, and we have a slope of 1, and there it is. 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5. So there's my identity function.
Now we have y equals negative 1 fourth x minus 5. My pink one is going through 0, negative 5, and I have a slope of negative 1 fourth. That means I go down 1 over 4. Down 1 and over 1, 2, 3, 4. And I could go up 1 and back 4 and be right there at negative 4, negative 4. I want you to notice my x has to be equal to my y because of this. Negative 4, negative 4 is my solution. Has to be true for both equations. I have spent, I know I've spent way too long on this. I'm sorry, guys. I'll, I'll speed it up from now on. So I'll just move it up and put them in, okay? Uh, let's start with the blue and I'll get rid of this. I'm going to go through, let me erase that picture, get that mark. There we go. Okay, so hopefully everybody can see it. I'm going to go through zero, negative three. I'm going to count down two and over five. And there we go. I'm done with the blue one. I put in my orange equation. I'm going to go through zero, four. And I have a slope of one, which looks like this. But notice that it also goes down one and back one, which puts me at negative five, negative one. OK, um, I'm just going to do the intercepts. And I'm going to do them in my head. If you need to write them, please do. Uh, this first one, the orange one, is going to go through. If x is 0, y is 1. Hopefully, you can see where I got that from. If y is 0, x is 2. And there's my, uh, my orange equation. Now I'm going to do my blue one. If x is 0, y is 4. And if y is 0, x is 2. And there's my other equation. Now, you could solve these for y and then use the slope and the intercept, but it's a lot slower. I think intercepts are the way to go for this one. Now, the solution is going to be at 2, 0. And a good way to test it is to just put it back in the equation in your head. 2 plus 0 is 2. And uh, 2, 0 for the second one is going to give me 4 plus 0 is 4, which is true. 2, 0. It's really easy to check. Just substitute your point back into both equations, OK? Just like we did in uh, U1, right? All right, in this one, watch out for the sign change. So um, I guess I, I just to be clear, I'm going to go ahead and write it one more time. So I'm going to go ahead and write down my, my, inter my, uh, sorry, um, my intercept points. So I'm going to write down my two intercept points for both equations. I'm going to do it very, fairly quickly. So in this one, if x is 0, y is 2. And if y is 0, x is negative 2. So I have these two intercepts. Be careful. 0, 2 is here. Negative 2, 0 is here. So there's my blue one. Now I want the orange one or the red one. And I want 0 for x. 0 for x gives you negative 2 for y. Notice that I just divided by negative 1. And a 0 for y gives me 2x equals 2, which means x is 1. So I need to put this one in. And I'm on the blue equation, this, oh, the orange equation, sorry. Uh, that's 0, negative 2, which is right there. And 1, 0, which is right there. And it looks like my solution is at 4, 6. And a good idea is just to check it. 4 minus 6 is negative 2. And 4 times 2 is 8, minus 6 is 2. So yeah, 4, 6. OK, easy one. Easy, easy, easy. We are going to graph this guy. Let me get rid of this. I'm going to go through 4. And I have a 1 third slope. And I'm done. I have y equal to 2, which is here and here. There's y equal to 2. And we're at negative 6, 2. I'm going to try to go a little faster. I'm almost done. <laughs> Getting a little tired of this one. All right. I went way too slow at first, didn't I? All right, guys, I'm going to do the intercepts for the blue one. So my intercepts, I hope you guys can do it in your head. Um, I'm going to let x equal 0, which gives me 1 for y. And then I'm going to let y equal 0, which gives me negative 2 for x. There's my blue equation. Here's my orange equation. I'm going through 0, negative 1. 
and I have a slope of one half. And oh no, no solution. I wonder what we're supposed to do about that. Oh, it's a negative one half. Oops. Ha. Almost made another mistake. Got to be careful. Uh, that's a negative one half slope, isn't it? There's our solution at negative two zero. Dang, almost messed that up. Got to watch those negatives. Right in the challenge zone too. All right, let's see if I can get this one right. All right, so we have X is, uh, if X is zero, Y is four on our blue. And then I'm gonna let Y equals zero, which gives me a negative eight. So there's my blue equation. Let's see if I can actually count a negative slope this time. So the green one is gonna go through zero, negative three, and we have a slope of down five, one, two, three, four, five, over one, two, three, four, which goes here. And it definitely hits at negative four, two. And I can see in the first one, it's true. And in the second one, it is true, negative four, two. Um, in case you're wondering what I was doing, I was substituting the solution in my head into both equations just to make sure it's correct. A uh, little practice with your arithmetic goes a long way. Makes your life a lot easier. Especially when you, as long as you don't make negative errors. Okay, guys, here we go. Uh, I'm going to go through 0, 4 for my, uh, I'll call it purple. Uh, so I'm going to go through 0, 4. Oh, 0, 4. I said 0, 4. Dang it. There we go. 0, 4. There it is. And I'm going to go down 3 and over 5. Down 3 and over 5. Puts me right there. Uh, done with the purple one. Now I'm going to go through 0, negative 3. And I'm going to count my slope. I'm going to go up 4 and over 5. Looks like I'm going to be right there, doesn't it? And that's 5, 1. Let's see. 5, 1 is true for that one. And 5, 1 is true for the second one. Yep. 5, 1. And it looks like we've got one or two more. Okay. I'm going to use intercepts to graph my green one. And hopefully you're getting good at these. It's, it's really not that hard. I'm going to let x equal 0, and then y is 1. And then if I let y equal 0, then x is 5. Just right there. There's my green equation. My blue equation goes to 0, 3. Just right there. And I have a 1 fifth. That's up 1 and over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I said 5. And yes, I did. And there's the point, negative 5, 2. And I'm going to check it. Negative 5, 2 is true. Negative 5, 2 is true. Yep. I'm actually substituting those. Oops, missed, missed it. Come on. Two. I'm actually substituting those values into those equations in my head. Really, seriously, it's not that hard. It just takes some practice. Uh, if you haven't done your orbit integers, I highly recommend it. Play some integer games, do some free rice. You'll get good at those integers and they'll make your life easy. One more and then we're done. Okay, looks like they did the slope and intercept. And notice that they gave me negative slopes on both of them. Funny. Uh, I think the AI is at work here. It wants to test my negative slopes again because I messed them up that one time. Okay, so I'm going to start with the blue one. I'm going to go through 0, 1. And I have a slope of negative 2 fifths. So there's negative 2 fifths. And in the orange one, I'm going to go through 0, 3, which is right there. And I have a negative 4 fifths, which is right there. And my solution is at 5, 1. When I put a 5 in here, 5, negative 1, there we go. When I, that's, uh, I found my error when I substituted the 5 in here. When I substitute the 5, notice that the 5s cancel out. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. And when I put the 5 in here, I also get negative 1. 5, negative 1. So I put in my last number, five, negative one, and I hope this helps. And I can't imagine if you stuck with me the whole time, but there you have it. Uh, go to the mastery and get your medal. I'll see you back again. Bye everybody. Do your U2. And you too can have a mastery medal. <laughs>